What's up everyone? We're back. I'm on Sung NPC here to talk about the cleric class. The cleric class I have an interesting relationship with the cleric because I don't like to play religious characters or characters that worship or follow gods because I believe in following no one. Uh, <laughs> but the clerics are so powerful as a divine spellcasting class. Like, there's some other good divine spellcasting classes. Oracle is fantastic. Probably my favorite divine class that does non nature magic. Um, I would say that, like, uh, I'd probably say I like shaman more than druid, but they're both high up there as well. Uh, but yeah, this is the cleric. They're very powerful, very magic, very support. A little bit of ranged or control, defense, no melee, apparently. But for the base cleric, I kind of disagree with that. I think there's lots of melee opportunity if you build it right. Not that you should ever use a regular cleric. And the fact that we have a regular cleric as our cleric companion is disgusting. Okay? The fact that we don't get an Ecclesia Thurge or at least like a Demon Bane Priest or a Crusader, I mean, come on, at least those are thematic. And we just get some basic ass freaking cleric is just beyond me. Um, anyway, <laughs> the cleric. The cleric is super straightforward. I mean, this is the religious wizard, basically, okay? You've got up to ninth level spells. All right, lots of spell slots. You've got knowledge, arcana, world, persuasion, and lore religion. Wisdom is your spell casting ability modifier. You've got high fortitude and high will and low reflex, which is actually the fact that you have two highs is actually pretty strong. Decent starting health as well. Eight's a pretty good number. You got light, medium, simple, and shield. Okay, channel energy. Positive if you follow a good god or a neutral and choose positive. Negative if you follow an evil god or a neutral and choose uh, choose evil. Okay, positive and negative energy there. You've also got the different domains. So Cleric has two domains. They get special domain powers, special domain spells that take up domain spell slots and don't count against your normal spell slot usage. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the school specialization for the wizard, but a little bit different. So what I think we need to do first is go over the different domains and the different deities, because I think that kind of background info is going to help us determine what's good to use with each of these other archetypes. So let's get into it. So first, let's get into our domains here, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is kind of, you know, talk about them briefly. There's so many, though, that we can't, you know, read word for word everything that these things do. Okay, but some of them are self-explanatory. So I will hover over, and you are free to pause and take a gander of what exactly they get. Okay? So first we have the air domain. Okay? This is all lightning, electricity, Okay, those types of spells, cloud spells, okay, you've got some greater shout in there, all right, stuff like that. Animal domain, gets you an animal companion, and a bunch of summon nature's ally and beast shape ability, hold animal, dominate animal, things like that. Artifice, I personally love artifice. Uh, you get, you know, an aura that grants everyone's bonus to saving throws. You get an aura that gives everyone DR, and then you get a bunch of like cool defensive support spells. So protection from spells, effortless armor, magical vestment, things like that. I love the artifice domain personally. Chaos domain, you'll notice that chaos, law, good, and evil are kind of all the same, just catered towards that specific alignment. But their powers are generally the same. They all have touch of alignment here. And then they each have like a, a a different weapon thing. So Chaos Blade, Axiomatic Staff, things like that. And then their spells are all pretty much the same. Protection from 
the anti to your alignment, communal protection from the anti, and then you've got like dispel magic, freedom of movement, and things like that for chaos, word of chaos, cloak of chaos, you know, typical chaos stuff. Charm domain. Okay, charm is dazing touch, which pff, throw it in the garbage. A touch spell like that for a non-melee cleric is bad. So I you know this isn't really worth it if you're gonna be a a non-melee cleric in my opinion. Charming smile. Okay, and then you've got, you know, hypnotism, hideous laughter, a bunch of enchantment type spells. Eagle splendor, insanity, euphoric tranquility, dominate monster, all that kinds of stuff. Community, a very strong one, and also one of my personal favorites. Artifice and community are two of my top five for sure. So community, calming touch is really nice. It's a nice little heal to any of your allies. Guarded hearth is a great, great ward on a specific area, very strong ability. And you've got like communal protection from alignment, prayer, communal protection from energy, communal stone skin. Lots of really good spells. Lots of really good spells. You've got darkness for touch of darkness, moonfire, which you blast divine moonlight, which is cool. And then you've got sleep, blindness, vampiric touch, shadow conjuration, shadow evocation, all that kind of stuff. All this darkness, blindness type things. You've got death, bleeding touch, death's embrace, all the necromancy type spells, of course, right? Destruction, destructive smite, destructive aura, a bunch of things that pretty, a lot of them are also necromancy, but they're just more like destroy something kind of spells, which makes sense. It's the destruction to me. Earth. Okay. So all of the elements also are kind of the same from each other, just different flavor, right? Acid dart, acid resistance all of the acid types of spells. Evil domain is like what we talked about before. So you have touch of evil and then scythe, scythe of evil, and then a bunch of evil spells like create undead, blasphemy, unholy aura. Fire, you've got firebolt, fire resistance, all of the fire spells. Glory, which is one of my least favorites. You've got touch of glory, which is meh to me. Aura of Heroism, which is kind of cool, but I don't like the... I mean, like, Heroism spell you could just give to people. I, I don't see the point in it. And then you've got, like, Shield of Faith, Blessed Weapon, Searing Light, things like that. It doesn't really offer you any spells that you couldn't already take as a cleric. Like, most of these spells, besides, like, Overwhelming Presence, maybe, are, like, spells you can already have. So... So good domain, touch of good, holy lance, a lot of the good spells. Healing domain, great for any healer out there. Rebuke death, healer's blessing, and then all of the nice little support spells. Restoration spells, neutralize poison spells, mass heal, breath of life, things like that. Knowledge domain, void form, and teaching moment. And then, you know, true strike, fox's cunning, communal scene, invisibility, death word, things like that. I like the knowledge domain. Probably doesn't break my top five, but I do like void form a lot. I like void form a lot. Law domain, so touch of law, staff of order, all the law spells, anti chaos spells. Liberation, you can just ignore impediments to your mo mobility for a number of rounds per day. You have freedom's call, and then you've got a bunch of like. Remove fear, remove this, remove that, freedom of this, freedom of that, obviously. Luck domain, you have a bit of luck, divine fortune, and then true strike, aid, protection from energy, cat's grace, things like that. Just things that basically increase chances of success, right? All right, here we go. So many of these. Madness domain, vision of madness, aura of madness, and then you've got, you know, typical my madness type, madness and fear related spells, basically. Okay. Get back to it. Magic domain. Hand of the Acolyte. I hate that. Dispelling touch. And then a bunch of, you know, 
typical magic spells like color spray, spell resistance, dispel magic, greater dispel magic, things like that. Nobility domain, I like this one a lot. Inspiring word, inspiring command, really cool abilities that just give bonuses to allies, which is super fun. And then divine favor, grace, magical vestment, heroism, brilliant inspiration, greater heroism, things like that. Just really affecting everyone. Definitely in my top five. I like nobility a lot. Plants, you get enlarge, bramble armor, and then you've got bark skin, contagion, thorn body, vine trap, beast shape, things like that. Enlarge is just so cool. You just enlarge yourself for a round. I don't know why you would need to do that, but it's kind of a cool power. <laughs> Uh, protection domain, definitely in my top five. It's just a good domain. It's not even one that I particularly like compared to others. It's just too good not to be in your top five. So resistant touch, aura of protection is the key ability here, super strong. And you've just got all of the protection spells, all of those communal protection spells, stone skin, things like that. Oh, so good. Repose is gentle rest, ward against death, a bunch of anti-undead spells. Rune is Blast Rune, Warding Rune, and then other communal protection spells, which is makes it a very strong contender as a domain, but not in my top five. Strength, Might of the Gods, Strength Surge, a lot of like enlarged in person, bull strength, things that make you stronger, right? Sun Domain, Sun's Blessing, Nimbus of Light, and then you know, th things that go against darkness. So sea invisibility, shield of dawn, flame strike, travel domain. That's my other one in the top five, my last one. Agile feet, dimensional hop, super fun. And then a bunch of like movement things and also break enchantment and stuff like that, which is cool. Trickery domain for copycat, master's illusion, sleep, invisibility, dispel, cool things war domain for battle rage and then all of these kind of like personal buffs and also personal attacks that you can do i don't know they only get one power that's really weird water domain icicle and cold resistance all the cold spells duh weather domain is storm burst and lightning lord and then you've got like call lightning slowing mud ice storm all the different types of like natural ailments kind of things so yeah very cool domains hopefully you guys can pause and quick enough and take a look at those deeper into it like i said my favorites artifice community okay i'd probably say nobility protection and then travel those are my top five i think they're all fantastic alignments Okay. Next we have to go over the gods. Now I already have a gods video where I rank the different gods. So if you want to learn more about some of their lore or how they interact in Kingmaker or things like that, uh, there's a video for that. Check it out. Um, or I guess, would it be that way? And But here are the gods. It's pretty much the same from Kingmaker, except they added a couple. Like exactly two. <laughs> so you've got Abadar, okay. And they, you guys can see on here, okay, the different domains that they show, okay. So obviously Abadar is a fave of mine because three of his three of his domains are my fave domains. So yeah, you can definitely check out what domains these are as we go through them. So Asmodeus. Calistria, Caden Kalian, Desna, Aristil, the God Claw Pantheon, which is really cool. It's like the one that the Hell Knights Order of the God Claw reveres, and it's like some of the best gods in here. Iori, Torag, Abadar, Asmodeus, and uh, where is she? Who is it? Iomide. Yeah. Very cool. Gorum. Gazra. Gyrona. 
Iomade. Iori, also a great one. Very good. Lamash 2, they added Lamash 2 in, which is really cool. Nethys, also one of my faves. Norgabur. Verasma. Rovagug. Serenray, hate her. Shellen. Torag. Urgothoa and Zonkuthon. Also like Zonkuthon a lot. Okay, so those are the gods. So you guys can pause any of those and read the little blurb about them and check out what domains they cover, and that gives you a good idea of what is going to work well for you. Because obviously the only domains you have access to are the ones that your gods are a part of, right? So, back to Cleric. You've kind of gone over a basic Cleric. Never take a basic Cleric. Let's go over the first archetype, Angel Fire Apostle. Okay, Angel Fire Apostle is a pretty interesting archetype. I haven't looked at it too much. I know it's... Many cleric archetypes will make you only have light armor proficiency and get rid of medium. So just be wary of that. So if you want to be like a frontliner cleric, you're not going to want to take one of the light armor only archetypes. So be wary of that. You also get diminished spell casting, so you receive one fewer spell slot at each spell level. When an angel fire apostle gets no spells per day at a spell level, you can cast domain spells of that level normally, but can only cast non-domain spells if you get them as bonus spells. Okay. You don't uh, get the normal channel energy, okay? This is a good only archetype. So you get extra channels of free feet, which is really cool. And then you get channel positive energy. You have to be a good, you have to worship a good deity. Like normally you can pick a channel positive if you're in, if you follow a neutral deity, but I'm like, as you can see here, you only have access to the good deities. Okay. You only have access to the good deities. You get cleansing flame. Okay. So. You can be your direct conduit for righteous power. Uh, whenever you cast a spell for one round, you can unleash a blast of flames as a swift action by expending a use of your channel energy, which is really cool. 1d4 points of damage per spell level of the, of the, of the highest spell level you can cast. So it's not the spell level you cast in the moment, it's the highest spell level you could cast, which is cool. Half is fire, half is raw divine power. Okay, and then you have to take a... You can half the damage with the saving throw. You also get versatile healing channel. So at each of these level ups, you get a new thing that you can do with your channel energy, which makes this like... This is like the ultimate support cleric here because there's so much stuff you can cleanse just with your channel energy alone, which really saves you on spell slots. So at fifth level, you can expend two uses to remove blindness or use lesser restoration. At seventh, remove disease or remove paralysis. Removing paralysis is huge. Level nine, neutralize poison. Level 11, breath of life. Another 17, heal. Seven, or 13, heal. 17, restoration. 19th level, resurrection. And only for two uses to use any of those. Like at the beginning, like two uses of this to remove disease or remove paralysis can be a lot, but like two uses to do heal, restoration, or resurrection is insane. So that's really cool. And you still get both your domains. So you're pretty much just giving up medium armor and being able to choose your channel and a little bit less spell casting, like a tiny bit less spell casting, but your channel that you can do is crazy. You just do so many different things. So very good guy support cleric here. Oh, sorry about that. Next is the Crusader. The Crusader only gets one domain, but they are the martial cleric, okay? They still get medium armor and all that, and they get combat, or they get bonus feats as you level up. And they have to be chosen from a specific list so 
you get these here, heavy armor, shield bash, martial, martial weapons, shield focus, tower shield, weapon focus, all these combat oriented things. And then at 10th level, you can add greater weapon and focus, improve critical weapon spec. And then 20, 20th level, you would get greater weapon specialization. Okay, so it's pretty. It's a pretty nice list. This is definitely the combat cleric, right? This is the combat cleric. You only get one domain, but what you lack in divine power, you make up for in martial prowess. So if you want like a frontliner cleric, this is the way to go. Really sucks that you didn't get to have our Shellen cleric be a crusader because I feel like that would have been great. At least, like Ecclesia Thurge would have made the most sense for him, but the fact that he's not even a crusader sucks. He's just not very useful as a cleric. Okay, Demon Bane Priest. Also, only one domain, okay? You get a uh, heavy armor proficiency, which is pretty cool. You just get it right out. You only get one domain other than that, pretty normal. And you get Demonic Knowledge, where you get bonus to your Knowledge Arcana checks equal to half your level, which is obviously what you use to identify the demons and their different abilities. So that's why you get bonus to Arcana, because that's what you roll when you enter combat with demons to figure out what their weaknesses are. And then you also get bonus feats at 4th and 8th level. They must be either a teamwork feat, spell penetration, or greater spell penetration. Now if I were you, being heavy armor, the teamwork feats might be pretty good, but spell pen and greater spell pen are also really good, so it just depends on how much spell casting you decide to do. But definitely a cool archetype, especially for this campaign, right? Uh, Ecclesia Thurge. Everyone's favorite cleric archetype, the Ecclesia Thurge. You only get uh, your proficient with not even all simple weapons, just crossbows, quarterstaff, dagger, club, and then your, fav your deity's favorite weapon, and you're not proficiency with any types of armor. But you get Blessing of the Faithful, which allows you to give a plus two to an ally that's a sacred bonus, which is great, because sacred and profane are bonuses that are harder to come by. So a sacred bonus on attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, saving throws, and ACs until your next turn. So you can just be dishing that out to people, which is really strong. You still get your whatever channel you do. You also get a, bound holy, a bonded holy symbol, which is awesome. So this allows you to expend this once per day for an additional spell slot of whatever spell level you choose that you can cast, which is awesome. And then you get your two domains, and then you have domain mastery. So, as a Ecclesia Thurge Cleric, you designate one domain as your primary domain and the other as your secondary. You can use your non-domain spell slots to prepare spells from your primary domain spell list, rather than only using the domain spell slots. And then each day when you prepare spells, you can select a different domain instead of your secondary domain. To add grant access to that spell. You don't lose any additional powers, you're not swapping out domain powers or anything, but you can swap out your secondary domain spells for another domain spells. Which is nice because you could choose a domain that you really like the powers for and keep those powers and then trade in for a different domain spells if you like the spells a different domain offers better, which gives you a lot of versatility. And that's part of the reason why Ecclesia Third is so strong. Also because Bonded Holy Symbol is great. <laughs> Next we have Herald Caller, which is the Cleric Summoner class. So you, you can spontaneously cast Summon Monster, okay? And then you get Augmented Summoning and then Superior Summoning as feats at these different level ups for free. You do only get one domain, which is fine, okay? You only get one domain, right? And you don't gain proficiency with medium armor or a shield. So once again, this is a light armor only archetype, okay? You also can spontaneously cast mon summon monster spells up to the level that you can cast. So eventually you will get summon monster nine, okay? Normally, 
if you're a positive energy cleric, you get spontaneous healing. If you're a negative energy, you get spontaneous uh, wounds. Spontaneous inflict wounds. And this one, you get spontaneous summon monster, which is pretty cool. And then the new archetype added, one of the new ones, Priest of Balance. Priest of Balance is a neutral only de uh, cleric. So you can only worship a neutral deity. So lawful, chaotic, lawful, chaotic, true, 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 true. Is God's for true? Yeah. These are all true neutral. And then you've got two lawful, two chaotic. So they're all neutral deities in some, some form or fashion and they aren't good or evil. So it's not just neutral, because you can't do a neutral good or a neutral evil deity. It's neutral, and then you can be chaotic or lawful, but you have your good or evil axis has to be neutral, okay? So you get channel positive and channel negative energy, all right, for the energy equilibrium. When you cast a positive channel energy or cure wound spell, you strengthen the next negative channel energy or inflict wound spell, and vice versa, okay? So whenever you cast one, you strengthen the opposite, okay? So cure wounds or inflict wounds will have their caster level increased by two, and the channel energy abilities will deal or heal 1d6 more damage. And then you have Empowered. So, Cure and Inflict Wounds affected by Energy Equilibrium become Empowered when cast, and the channel energies do 2d6 2D more damage. And then you've got Quickened, where all of the stuff becomes Quickened when cast. So being able to use it in a shorter action time. And you do only get one domain, okay? So, this offers some like versatility in terms of healing and destruction. And then you've also got only one domain. Because of the way the Priest of Balance works, you can channel positive energy to heal living creatures or harm undead, and then channel negative to hurt living creatures or heal undead. So you can heal and then damage. Heal, damage, heal, damage. So scrap what I said. <laughs> you can totally mess around with either channel. That becomes very powerful. The Priest of Balance is just a force of giving and taking life, apparently. That's freaking fantastic. I love this class. Okay. I misunderstood that. That's my bad. But damn, that is powerful. Really, really powerful. And then being able to do more damage and then also do them quickly, like quicking them, because they're usually a standard action. So you would be channeling as a swift action. That's insane. It's like you can channel and then immediately channel again. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, Priest of Balance is great. I love it. I love it. Do I think any of these are Garbaggio? Probably not. I don't think any of these can be things that you throw away. Being a support main class, like, any of these could be useful, depending on the circumstance. Do I think any of these are Cleric Plus? I don't really know. My gut says that Ecclesia Thurge is Cleric Plus, if you're not trying to be a frontliner. If you want to be support spellcasting cleric only, Ecclesia Thurge is cleric plus. If you want to be a frontliner martial cleric, Crusader is cleric plus. Angelfire Apostle is great for those people that want to be good characters. I think if you're going to be a good character worshipping a good deity, you might as well just take this archetype anyway. Demon Bane Priest is good for the martial fighters that want to focus on killing demons specifically. And then Herald Caller is the summoner if you want to have fun. And the Priest of Balance, I think, is a great one as well. You give up a domain for it, but you just heal and destroy. If you want to focus on channel energy rather than spellcasting in general, I feel like this would be the class for you. So that is the Cleric. A really cool, very powerful class if used correctly, unlike the companion they give you in the game, which 
does not do cleric correctly at all. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, it's a damn shame because it's just like, it's so garbage. It's so garbage. The guy's garbage. I hate it. He's a cool character. He just never, he's never powerful enough to do what I want him to do. And he doesn't heal better than the Oracle to do what I want him to do. So it sucks. But Cleric is a great class for a main character if you want to give it a shot. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you've learned a lot about the Cleric and what they can do. We didn't really look at spells, but that's okay. We looked at all the domains. We looked at all the deities. You guys got to see these different archetypes. And I will be doing a spells video, so don't worry. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, like, subscribe, stick around. More classes coming out. Uh, my fellow streamer, Pondor, and I are also going to do videos on the auto builds for different companions and kind of talk about them and how they could be improved and whatnot. So if that's interest to you, check it out when those come out. And yeah, thanks for hanging out. If you want to hang out more or with anyone else in the community or talk about this game or any other game, check out the Discord in the description below and join us. We love talking shop. It's super fun. We'll love to have you there. And yeah, I'm on Slug NPC, and I will catch you guys in the next one.